Hello everyone, welcome back to Synthesis Workshop. My name is Aiden Luby and I'm one of the editorial board members here on the channel. We hope you all had a happy holidays and brought in the new year surrounded with friends and family. Synthesis Workshop is bringing in 2025 with today's Research Spotlight episode, as today we'll be joined by Zi Hong Lee, who will tell us about his unique strategy of aldehyde olefin coupling using in-situ generated sulfoxalates. Zihong received his bachelor's degree at Imperial College London, conducted research with Professor Anthony Barrett, then completing his master's degree at the University of Cambridge in the group of Professor Michele Vendruscolo. He is now a PhD candidate at the University of Bristol in the lab of Adam Noble. Before I turn it over to Zihong, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button to stay up to date with Synthesis Workshop, and be sure to connect with us on X. This truly helps our engagement as we try to build a zero cost to consumer chemistry educational platform for all. Thank you again. And now here is Zihong. Thank you very much for the kind introduction and invitation to present my PhD work on aldehyde olefin couplings by sulfoxalate mediated oxidative generation of keto radical anions. Keto radicals are valuable reactive intermediates because they allow carbon chemistry to be extended beyond the traditional electrophilic reactivity through a simple single electron reduction to a nickelphilic radical. However, this pathway is challenging due to the large negative reduction potential of carbon compounds. Therefore, highly reducing conditions are normally required, such as stoichiometric amounts of metals, electron reduction, or acid mediated photocatalysis. One of the classic ways to keto generation for carbon ions is by the use of strong metal reductants such as mandioldite, facilitated by its higher oxidicity. More recently, Nose and co-workers reported photoredox catalyzed keto generation, enabled by a protocoupling transfer approach, wherein the reduction potentials of carbon are increased via hydrogen bond interactions. An alternative approach to ketoretic generation from aldehydes that avoids the challenging single electron reduction is by in situ activation wherein aldehydes are converted to adducts that are more amenable to catalytic radical formation. For example, Najib and co-workers have demonstrated that alpha as toxic iodides generated by electrophilic activation of aldehydes can undergo efficient photo-induced halogen transfer to afford alpha as toxic radicals, which are protected keto radicals or ketotype radicals. However, there are no reports of related in situ activation of aldehydes for the unprotected keto radicals or keto radical anions. Herein, we report the first example of unprotected keto generation via nucleophilic activation of aldehydes with a tracer's mediator. We are inspired by the use of sulfide salts to remove aldehyde impurities by formation of water soluble alpha hydroxysulfonates. However, sulfonates are less susceptible to redox transformation due to their high oxidation potentials. On the other hand, the less well-known congener, alpha hydroxysulfonates are more attractive redox active adducts owing to their low oxidation potentials. We envision the strategy wherein aldehydes are in situ transformed into alpha hydroxysulfonates by an nucleophilic addition of sulfoxalate. A subsequent oxidative desulfonation event should, in theory, afford an unprotected keto radical intermediate. In this work, we demonstrate the application of a sulfoxide strategy for oxidative ketone generation through photoredox catalyzed aldehyde olefin couplings. For a synthetic approach, a three step sequence is conceived, which involves release, addition, and coupling. After release of the sulfoxalate from the reservoir, either thiol dioxide or sodium dithionide in aqueous hydroxide solution, the model substrate benzaldehyde is converted into the redox active alpha hydroxysulfonate by nucleophilic addition. A subsequent photoredox catalyzed redox neutral sulfonate olefin coupling would afford the desired alcohol product. Our investigation began by synthesis and isolation of the benzaldehyde derived alpha hydroxysulfonate. Following the reported method, the desired sulfonate product was obtained in a 71% yield as white solids. Cyclic voltammetry revealed the low oxidation potential 
of approximately 0.3 volts. Besides, we are pleased to find that the alpha hydroxysulfonates could be quantitatively formed in situ on a 0.1 mm scale in presence of the photocatalyst using Y. Subsequent subjection of the model olefin substrate for vanopyridine to the reaction mixture followed by photoradiation gave the desired product in a 46% yield. Unexpectedly, the softening side product with SO2 incorporation was also observed. To our delight, the softening side product was quantitatively converted into the desired product by silica mediated protodesulfination, giving an overall yield of 54%. Encouraged by the preliminary result, extensive optimization was carried out. Under optimal condition, a 74% overall yield was obtained. Besides eosin Y, your BPY chloride with a similar excited state oxidation potential gave up comparable, yet slightly lower yield, whilst lowering the equivalence base also reduced the yield. Although a comparable result was achieved using water as the only solvent, acetonitrile was chosen as a co-solvent to ensure the solution of less water-soluble substrates. Finally, the impact of the pre-storing procedure was investigated, which was routinely carried out to perform the alpha hydroxysulfonate before photoradiation. Nevertheless, a similar yield was obtained without. It is worth noting that without photocatalyst, or light, or thyroid dioxide, no desired product was observed, supporting our proposed mechanism. For the surface scope, select examples are shown here. Please check our paper for details. A broad range of benzaldehydes was successfully coupled, including those functionized with ethers, amines, benzylic alcohol, amides, halides, phenol, and carboxyl acid. Heteroaromatic aldehydes could also be used, giving furan and pyridine good yields. Of note, aldehydes bearing strongly electrodonating tertiary amines in the power position, such as morpholine and boprotactic propylosine, reacted efficiently under our oxidative desulfonation conditions. The keta generation of these highly electron-rich aldehydes would be very challenging via a reduction pathway, whilst aliphatic aldehydes were found to react with sulfoxalate to generate alpha hydroxysulfonate. They failed to undergo productive keta olefin coupling. Next, the olefin scope was investigated using slightly modified conditions with a one-to-one -one ratio of water and acetonitrile to ensure dissolution of the less water-soluble olefins. For vinyl periodines bearing a range of substituents gave moderate to high yields, including alpha phenyl, alpha methyl, triphenylmethyl, and halogens. A lower yield was obtained with two vinyl periodine, which we attribute to the two periodyl group being less electron withdrawing compared to four periodyl. Nonetheless, this is notable considering that all previous reports of ketoalic reactions with two vinyl periodine required additional Lewis or bronsted acid activation of the pyridine group. Besides, starines were also compatible accompanying partners. Other electron withdrawing groups on the aromatic ring or the alkene were essential. We found that simple starine failed to give any coupled product, and we wondered if this was due to a slower rate of keta addition to the less electron deficient starine, or more challenging reduction of the ensuing alpha phenyl radical to the carbon ion. To investigate this, we subsequently explored intramolecular keto olefin couplings of olefin tethered aldehydes. Although our initial attempts proved unsuccessful due to the poor solubility of the substrates in acetonitrile and water mixture, we found using tetrabutyl ammonium hydroxide in place of sodium hydroxide ensured dissolution and allowed the reactions to proceed. We were pleased to find that simple styrene tethered aldehydes gave desired products in this intramolecular fashion. We think this is due to the faster rate of intramolecular addition of the ketoalic anion to the olefin, suggesting that the failed intermolecular coupling of simple styrene was due to the slower rate of intermolecular keta addition. Electron deficient olefins were also tolerated. Interestingly, the cyclization also proceeded with the unprotected secretory amine leakage. However, tetrahydroquinoline was not observed 
due to the unexpected oxidation to quinoline under the reaction conditions. Next, to provide support for our proposed sulfoxide-mediated ketoalic formation, we conducted the vermofluorescent sequential studies using isolated benzaldehyde-derived alpha-hydroxyphenate. Unfortunately, fluorescent sequential studies with using water anion were complicated by an unexpected ground state sulfoxalate transfer reaction, which is reversible. Please check the supplementary information for details. Therefore, we used RuBPY chloride instead, as it was also a competent photocatalyst in the reaction, but displayed no ground state reactivity with sulfonate. With this catalyst, we observed efficient quenching under the basic conditions. Interestingly, no quenching occurred in the absence of sodium hydroxide, suggesting that proton coupling transfer or initial deprotonation on the sulfonate before single electron transfer could be involved. Using a mixture of benzaldehyde, thiol dioxide, and sodium hydroxide led to similar levels of quenching, which provides further support for in situ formation of the sulfonate. Crucially, no quenching was observed with benzaldehyde, fluvanopyridine, or sulfoxalate, confirming the key role of the alpha hydroxysulfonate in the photoredox catalysis. For the proposed mechanism, the in situ generated alpha hydroxysulfonate undergoes single electron oxidation by the photoexcited eosin water anion to afford a sulfonyl radical anion 1, which undergoes desulfonation to extrude sulfur dioxide and affords the ketyl intermediate. Based on the relatively high acidity of ketyl radicals, with pKa around 8, we expect the equilibrium to favor ketyl radical anion 2 over neutral ketyl under our basic conditions. Subsequent radical addition to the olefin, followed by alkoxide protonation, gives LQ radical 3, which is reduced to the carbon ion to turn over the photocatalyst before protonation to provide the desired product. The formation of small amounts of SO2 incorporated product can be rationalized by sulfonation of the LQ radical intermediate 3, followed by single electron reduction. In conclusion, we have developed the first example of a ketyl radical generation by oxidative desulfonation of in situ formed alpha hydroxy sulfonate. Our approach utilized sulfoxalate as traceless mediator, bypassed the use of transition metals, and avoided the strongly reducing conditions that are normally required. Therefore, we hope our sulfoxalate mediated strategy can be a valuable alternative to traditional reductive ketoradical generation methods. For this work, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Adam Noble, for his guidance and support. I would also like to thank other Noble Group members, Professor Verinda Agarwal and the Agarwal Group for their continued support. Last but not least, I would like to thank the Taxidity Management Team, our industry collaborator, and other funding agencies. And thank you very much to Matthew for the invitation and I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. Thank you again to Zihong for an excellent talk, and thank you again for listening to this Research Spotlight episode. Be sure to share with a lab mate or a friend, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next episode.